Good day, DNN listeners. Julia Childless here alongside Rhino from the Dallas Deception. Very kindly offered to sit in on this uh, stream with me. It Thank you, sir. It is truly an honor to be at the first Murda, first men's national championship. It's an honor to get to announce the championship game, and it's an honor to announce it alongside the diva of men's at roller derby. Thank That's you. what we're calling you. No, we're calling me that now. That's okay, what we call I can, you. I can handle that. If there's anything to be a diva of, it is definitely men's roller derby, everybody. It is no big secret how much I love dude derby, as I like to call it. And it, you know, what's really exciting to me looking at, and we're up on the scaffolding event, again, for those of you who are familiar with the last feed that I did, we are about uh, 15 to 20 feet in the air on a set of scaffolding here on Long Island Skate Safe. We and are about um, to watch the championship bout between the New York Sock Exchange, they're in black, and the Puget Sound Outcast Roller Derby, they are in yellow with the blue trim. Puget Sound coming into the tournament today, number four, and New York Sock Exchange number two. This game is to decide who will be one and who will be two. So either way, Puget Sound is going up in the rankings, and New York has a possibility to leave up one as well. And so far, every single team in this tournament is leaving in a different ranking than they came in. Most definitely Puget Sound with that huge upset against St. Louis earlier today. We will pause for the national anthem. Lovely rendition of the Star Spangled Banner to kick off this championship bout. Like we said earlier, a huge upset for St. Louis getting beat by uh, Puget Sound earlier today. That was the rematch of two years ago, the 2009 Spring Roll. And Puget Sound came um, victorious in that bout also, but not by a lot and not by much as it was today. So that was definitely a rematch that everybody was looking forward to. And Puget Sound's got a couple more guys they've added to their lineup since then, mainly jammers. Uh, they've got a couple of new guys on their team. Uh, not newer players, but new additions to their team who are fantastic jammers. And that's just beat up their lineup instead of having to have Hollywood Chuck Berry jam the whole game. Correct, correct. And Hollywood Chuck Berry, obviously, an amazing jammer, but it's very nice to have uh, more of a spread on that, obviously. Um, we do have Speed Dealer out there and Scott Slamilton. Uh, New York bout. Let's talk a little bit about that Magic City bout for just a sec. New York versus Magic City. Um, ab absolutely an amazing bout. I did announce that one earlier. And Magic City so close. About eight points spread on the end of that bout. New York just fought it to the end. Heartbreaking for Magic City, of course, to lose that. I was only able to watch the first half of that game. I had uh, my own bout to get ready for. But they definitely, was, it was going back and forth. The whole first bout, and we were definitely looking at the score from the other track, uh, trying to keep up with it, and you could you could just see how it was so close the whole time. And any minor, even the most the smallest little mistake, could change change the outcome of that game. And oh, exactly! With a point spread like that, you do not want to uh, watch your penalty minutes and things like that. So uh, obviously, you are correct, with, especially with both those teams. And we're going to see that with this with these teams as well. Both teams having at least three go-to jammers that are able to go out there 
um, on a power play at any point and, and score 15 minimum points. Definitely. And that's what's going to be the factor in this game is which team's going to be able to get the opposing team's jammer off the track. I, I completely agree with that, and that's basically going to come down to penalty minutes, I think, as you said. Penalty management is going to be a huge factor. You know, it's it's hard to it's hard to catch up, even when you have a full staff of blockers out there. If you can't get the opposing team's jammer off the track, exactly. Let and and that's going to be the biggest part. Let me run down a couple of quick lineups for you. Uh, playing for Puget Sound, number 50, Barry Manalto, 97, Biggie Tolls, 55, Corporal Punishment, 19, Corey Payne, 33, Duke of Deldridge, number 13, Gino Evil, 71, Grim Streeper. 247 Hollywood, Shuckberry, 23 Quadzilla, 35 Radilac, number 14 Rye Rod, 16 Sasquatch, number 100 Scott Slamilton, 53 Speed Dealer, 4 Stand Aside, and 11 Thunderstruck. They they brought a huge staff. New York skating tonight. We got the 47 Ape Drink and number 2 Ace of Skates, 56 Atticus Flinch, 1B, Bane Anna on Skate, 61 Filthy McNasty. Uh, number eight, Harm's Way, 42, Jeffrey, 1275, Jimmy Rage, number six, Jonathan R. Two for one, Ladies Night, number 14, Marlon Brando, Psycho Billy, number 13, number 11, Rinkworm, number seven, Ronnie Marco, Sammy Dangerfield, number zero, number 100, uh, Shoots and Splatters, number three, Starsky, T-Stop Tornado, Vader, and Wolfgang Van Sob. It's the same New York team you've seen, and, and you know, they're, they're ready to play. They're ready to play. Uh, this is their second game of the tournament. This is Puget Sound's third. Both teams have had quite a break between our last games. Uh, New York having the biggest break, but that could be a factor because Puget Sound played, uh, you know, a couple hours ago, still warm, and they're and they're coming off a huge momentum thing, though. I mean, they they, they you know no every, no one expected them to win the game that they won, and they did. You know, I mean, and that's just going by the standings. You know, you, you think the higher ranks are always going to win, and that's obviously not a factor in any road derby game at all. Right, and what's getting me is Puget Sound does not look tired at all, even despite the fact that they did play a few hours ago. They look uh, pepped up. They look ready to play. Uh, New York looking great as well, but like you said, having a little bit more time to kind of sit and cool off and right. not as much time and to get warm. What I'm digging in this room is that we have so many of the uh, previous teams that played, so many fans here in the building. It's very tragic. Uh, about a month ago, Haywood, one of the founding members of Puget Sound, taking his own life. Um, so showing him some definite respect right there. You know he'd love to see where Men's Derby was going to. Um, he also had a, a huge hand in the Minnesota League that I currently announced for, and I know we had talked about that earlier as well. And a, a big part of Murda also, um, Haywood Jablomi. So um, very sad. Yeah, Haywood Jablomi, I believe, uh, organized the first um, – men's tournament ever which was a throwdown in the sound back in 2009 i think a Definitely. long time ago there was only four teams there dallas deception puget sound the diamond city death kings and the twin city terrors which is what haywood skated for at the time exactly and it looks like first off coming out uh, right run almost going to stay in balance. No pass, no penalty. Now lead jammer for Jonathan Norby. He's definitely out first. And here comes Hollywood Chuck Berry around. He will be lead. And he will watch uh, Jonathan R very closely. He'll call it off. Good play there. Zero, zero as we go into the next jam. Jonathan R getting a big jump right away in this bout, showing us what New York is made of. He is very fast, very agile. Like you said, Hollywood Chuck Berry, the big jammer for this. But we are going to be filling in with some other folks. Both number 11s for each team lining up now. Thunderstruck with his theme song playing in the background. Rinkworm for the New York Stock Exchange, the veteran. Charlie with Chuck Berry playing back-to-back. -back. Quadzilla pivoting for the Puget Sound Outcast Roller Derby. Everybody starting way back by the jam line. Pretty New York starting on all derby. four knees, and the Puget Sound starting in front of them. And there is your no-pack call. And now we're back to a pack now. Quadzilla going to try to stay in run. Rinkworm is going to break through. Way off, no lead. Breaking, Rickworm breaking around the inside, around Quadzilla, doing one of those great loops that he does, and he will catch up to the pack very quickly. 
Thunderstroke on the receiving end of a shoulder by Jeffrey. He's going to put him out of bounds, and he'll step back in. Here comes Rinkborn scoring some points now. There's the jammer pass. Five points. Ryrod with a big hit on Rinkworm and a miss. Swing and a miss. Rinkworm out of there. Clear. Five points. Grand slam. Rinkworm. Thunderstruck having a really hard time getting past that New York defense. Looks like Ladies Night and Ace of Skates and Vader keeping him back. Uh, this is a great lineup of defense in New York's lineup. So Ace of Skates laying a big hit on Thunderstruck as he comes around putting up his hands. Yeah, so Ace, he did not Ace of Skates him. skating in reverse. Stopping him with a shoulder to the sternum. Very, very difficult move to do, but when you see it, it just looks very pretty like that. That was that was textbook, textbook skating in reverse and blocking. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure what do you really call that. It's just a good, it's a good, it's a good chest to chest block. Definitely, Roxy Horn and I talking earlier about how New York plays very good basic derby. They play good, clean roller derby, but they play everything to perfection. And here's, and here's going to be one of the biggest deciding factors. Also, Puget Sound, very big guys. Very physical team if they need to be, and New York not known for being a, bi a physical team. They're right. very technical. They got some guys that'll hit. Vader's one of them. Jeffrey's one of them. Thunderstruck They're also guys that are out, definitely that people that will. Points. Just really quickly here, uh, Thunderstruck does manage to leave the pack, and he is picking up that four points. Like you said, New York not a physical team. Uh, and here comes sound. Our that's Thunderstruck coming through with a grand slam, up. Thunderstruck. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is they're going to have to keep their head in it and not play that physical game because Puget Sound's going to be way better at it than they are. Right. And that's going to just that's going to take New York blockers off the track. The one thing they that both of these cool. teams do have is that they communicate a whole lot in their pack. You see them talking to each other, touching each other, pushing each other around. They really know how to keep that communication line going, and that is an amazing thing in both of these teams. So that's going to be a huge factor as Two well. Two jams into it, 26 minutes, 53 seconds. What looked like a blowout jam, the second jam, ended up not being that bad. New York 11, Puget Sound 9. As It looks like we're sending... Uh, that's uh, Speed Dealer from Puget Sound against Jonathan Nara, who's jamming back-to-back. -back. Uh, excuse me, uh, jamming every other. Speed Dealer on the outside, unopposed, not even touched. Jonathan Nara being recycled back to the back, coming out of turn two. Jonathan Big hit on the bottom and the top. Somebody's Jonathan getting Nara taking a huge hit from number 19, Corey Payne, tripping over his skate. Corey will be taking the penalty for that and heading to the penalty box for a minute. Jonathan Nara taking the next loop around. Jonathan Nara makes his way through. Speed Dealer now only got one to beat. Abe Drake and Adrian is going to go down. It's going to take Speed Dealer with them. No penalty assist. Abe Drinken looks like he curled up into a little ball there. That falling small that you hear about in Derby. Speed he did not want to touch Speed Dealer on his way through. Speed Dealer's fighting for those extra points. Kind of cost him some time there. Jonathan Arm made it back through. Four points for both jammers on that pass. So the score is not going to change as far as the lead or anything like that. Speed Dealer now going to try to catch Jonathan Arm. Speed Dealer is a... Speed skater. I mean, it's, it's literally in his name. He 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 can catch anybody out there on that One track. One thing I'm noticing here is that these teams are being very very careful. The last few bouts we've seen, we've seen a lot of penalty minutes racked up. It's really hurt the teams that have been trying to play. I notice both of these teams are being extremely careful about where they're placing their bodies and how they're assessing penalties. Everybody's being very careful to not put a penalty where they don't need it and they don't want it. And so I think that's huge for both of these teams to have realized that about everybody going in. This rev this rev crew is a mix of the ref crews from all day. Um, Sugar Daddy was the head ref from both the games that I played in earlier today. He, he calls a very tight game, but a very fair game. He's not going to lean, he's not going to allow either team to do what he doesn't want to see out there. So Ladies. it's always good when you're playing to know that the referee, you know, as long as they're consistent, we, you know, we can have a good game and play. We can adjust. Ladies, Ladies night, night trying to get through. Time running into that Puget Sound uh, defense. They do have to let him go. Minor cut. He's going to the box. Huge uh, rattle now from, uh, excuse me, Rod Rod going to the box. Corey Payne's released. Hollywood Chuck Berry has not made his way through yet. He's got uh, several New Yorkers to beat. Steps in just on the inside before getting past Ace of Skates. Meanwhile, ladies', ladies coming guys coming back through. Corey nice big Payne, Corey Payne, Payne, Corey Payne back on him. Corey Payne just weaving and ducking, not letting Ladies Night through. Ladies Night finally curling around the inside of Corey Payne. Corey Payne having to drop back and rejoin the pack. The entire turn, Corey Bain was on him, and it just couldn't stay on him long enough. Hollywood Chuck Berry just trying to fight that 20-foot. It can't quite get New York to bite on it. Finally makes his way out, and he's lead. He'll call it off immediately before Ladies Night's able to score any more points. Ladies Night, of course, a big catalyst in that very last jam against Magic City, getting those few extra points they needed to really push ahead. Um, absolutely an amazing player, one of the organizers of this tournament as well. 
Donovan Arm back to jam once again. Speed dealer up again. It is three on three, both teams with a blocker in the box. Huge and Sal will have the only pivot, the only, only advantage as far as passing the star. 20 to 13, New York sits in the lead with 23 minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Jonathan R trying to take that hole right in between Radelak and Corporal Punishment. He manages to get it. Zips past Speed Dealer on the inside. Speed Dealer tries to catch him but can't. Speed Dealer gets out first, tries to do a typewriter maneuver where you push the jammer back in. And Jonathan R is going to jump around him. And Speed Dealer will call it off before any points are able to go. Very wise move on Speed Dealer's part. Looked like Jonathan Arwa is going to catch up to the pack before him there. This absolutely illustrates the importance of getting that lead jammer. Even if you're not going to get those points, you have the opportunity to control where that jam is going and what's going to happen. And that's going to be key, key in this bout, I think. Ladies' night, back to the, uh, back to the jammer line for New York. Stand aside, who's been a thriller this whole bout. This is, I believe it's one of the first bouts that he's been able to skate with Puget Sound, and this is the first tournament he's been in one of his first showings, and he has shocked the world as far as fast as he is, and the man is 49 years old. He is 49. I talked to him earlier today. I said, you did an amazing job. He said, well, they just grabbed me and asked me to come. One thing that I am seeing out of both teams is, is both jammers on either team, the jammers are just continuing to rack up as many points as they can and not just getting four and calling it off. It's a long game. Really quick here, just to let you know, Corey Payne headed to the penalty box. Um, we are back three on three for each team. Corey Payne has a really tough time uh, keeping control of his penalties a lot of times, and so uh, that should be something they watch really, really carefully. Stand aside, Lee Jammer. He's made his way through, and he's going to get a grand slam. This is going to put them within two points. Ladies' night still has not made it out. He's got Speed Dealer to beat. He's all in the back of Speed Dealer. Looks like he's going to get a minor penalty, and Speed Dealer is going to the box for being 20 feet out of play. And meanwhile, stand aside is the back scoring points while Ladies Night has just now made it back in, and the box is empty now for New York Stock Exchange. Two blockers in the box. Stand aside almost looked out. like he was going to call the jam there and then changed his mind. And now he will call the jam as Ladies Night just sweeps past him. Ladies but Night accruing three points on that pass. So Stan decided to tie the game up, but Ladies Night was able to get three, so now we are in a three-point game. 23 to 20, 21 minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the first half. We are on jam number seven. Looks like we have Jonathan R. up once again against Thunderstruck, number 11 it for Puget Sound. Puget Sound skating short on their jammers. Radelak and Hollywood Chuck Berry, the only ones out there right now. Three on two, New York starts from the knee to get the immediate... Uh, immediate whistle. Thunderstruck is pushing Thunderstruck his way through. through. Jonathan R makes his way out. And Jonathan R will be lead jammer. Thunderstruck will not. Jonathan R will call it off. You know what we haven't seen yet? We haven't seen the uh, the infamous Scott Slamilton jam yet for Fugit Sound. We have not. And in their last bout uh, against against uh, St. Louis, Scott uh, got hit very hard, uh, hurt his ribs, and bruised them up very badly. And so um, I, I did wonder if they were going to be sending him out or if they were going to rest him or if they're maybe saving him for later in the bout when they're really going to he need that speed. Necessary only. Corey Payne standing now. He'll be released from the box. It'll be three on three shortly within 10 seconds. Ladies night jamming and Quadzilla, the Thrilla. Quadzilla wearing the white glove that he's worn since the death of Michael Jackson that happened at ECE two years ago. I was with him. We were eating dinner at a Texas roadhouse when we saw all the uh, on the news that Michael Jackson had passed away, and we immediately went to Walmart and did some arts and crafts in the uh, hotel room and put some rhinestones on a glove for him. I don't believe he's wearing that particular glove, but he is wearing the white batting glove that he's worn. Very nice, every Quadzilla, game of course, then. in a force in roller derby. Quadzilla, very famous as far as men's roller derby goes. It would be very difficult for you to be involved in this sport at all and not know the Green Monster himself. Most definitely. He is uh, business partners with uh, Short Bus, who plays for uh, my league in St. Paul, the Twin Cities Terrace. Very sad that none of them are here with me tonight. I miss them a lot. But uh, I told Quadzilla he would have to stand in for Short Bus then as far as hanging out with me. Quadzilla going to do double duty. Rinkworm going to burn a penalty. Two on three in favor of Puget Sound. And Abe, that's Jonathan Abe R. Jamming for the New York Stock Exchange. Abe Drinkin doing like he's doing a little dancing down there. Both teams are just trying to kill the time. Speed Dealer gets out. we got a full pack from Puget Sound. And they are going to start making their way forward to get the uh, jam going. 23 seconds into it. We finally are getting some movement. Speed Dealer turning around a little bit to assess the situation. 
Everybody moving very slowly to start out with. Quadzilla, a little bit of a false start there heading out before the whistle. He'll be given a minor and he will not be able to get lead. A Four on three there. in favor of Puget Sound. Quadzilla almost being able to stay on the inside. He's usually very good at tiptoeing the line. He's very acrobatic on his skates. Struggling now between Marlon Brando and A. Drinken and Ace of Skates. Excuse me, that's Ace of Skates, not Marlon Brando. No pack. Assess. Jonathan R. makes his way through. Jonathan R. is your lead jammer. And Quadzilla makes his way through. And beautiful move by Quadzilla as he hops over and puts his chest on top of A. Drinken's shoulder and rides him through the inside line or outside John line. Jonathan R., of course, able to do that because everything else was... This is that pack we were talking about where they kind of leave the jammer to do what he wants to do. They engage the pack, they deal with the blockers, and then Jonathan R. able to pick up that lead jammer status because of that. Big block by Chuck Berry to knock Jonathan R. out of bounds. He calls it off, but the whistle was late, and Quadzilla will get one point on that pass, and I don't believe... Oh, it, oh, excuse me. There was a blocker in the box, so that's two points now. They are giving Quadzilla Excellent. two points on there. 23-21, they held New York Talk Exchange to zero points with that advantage. Looks Lady like you were Knight. asking earlier about uh, Scott Slamilton. I believe that is him. That is Scott Slamilton, number 100 for Puget Sound. Yeah, up against Ladies Night for New York, and so we will see uh, how Scott Slamilton is feeling. We have both packs way back by that jammer line. Puget Sound going to take a late knee. Gino Evil is going to keep him in play. And there goes the whistle. Scott Slamilton now got three to beat. Dino Evil going to dip, slip up, and Ladies, Ladies Night's going to be out. Ladies Night slipping right past Puget Sound there. They cannot engage him outside of that zone. So he is able to pick up that lead jammer set Scott, Scott Slamilton, Slamilton flying Scott around. Scott Slamilton skates so fast and ducks his head so much that his helmet literally moves to the front of his forehead all the time. Scott Slamilton running right into the back of number 42 from New Jeffrey's York. Jeffrey's going to look for a foul. He's not going to get it. The whistles had already blown. Fouls after the fourth whistle do not count, unfortunately, exactly. unless it is a late hit, and they're not going to give him a late hit. He was a jammer, and he needed time to slow down. And unfortunately, so Jeffrey was that means of slowing down. So a few points accrued there, but... Um, 24, Scott Slamilton telling us that despite his injury, he is still skating as fast as usual. So There goes the first whistle. Neither team moving. Rinkworm, Jamie for New York Chalk Exchange. Speed dealer for Puget Sound. Almost looks like they're having a little conversation there about something. Gino Evil trying to keep the pack going and keep everybody in play. Rinkworm struggling his way through. Gino Evil bouncing him around in between Corey Payne and Corporal Punishment. And the one thing I thought that was going to help Puget Sound right now is kind of being their Achilles heel. I thought the aggression was going to help him. And right now they're just, they're all kind of swinging for the fence and taking themselves out of play. Not holding the walls the best they need to. And so far, neither jammer has made their way out, but only a couple left to beat. Rinkworm trying to get on the inside. was met by Chuck Berry, sandwiched in between Corporal Punishment and Corey Payne that is going to send him back to the back of the pack. And that gives uh, Speed Dealer a chance to break free. He is not your lead jammer, but he is free of the pack and able to make his second pass around. I don't think he minds much. Rinkworm still not able to get out, goes out of bounds, falls down. Speed Dealer on the outside, untouched. Grand Slam Speed Dealer. Very nice there. And New York, of course, showing why it's so important to keep that tight uh, tight pack like we were talking about. Uh, Puget Sound kind of flying all over the place. Big New York keeps hit a right very there. tight pack. Hollywood Chuck Berry hitting Rinkworm, grabbing Corporal Punishment's hand to stop both of them so that Rinkworm had to make sure that he came in behind Hollywood Chuck Berry and Hollywood again. Hitting Rinkworm in the back. Speed Dealer trying to get through. Jumping in and out of bounds. No penalties, but no pass. Speed Dealer running right into Ace of Skates, turning around to block him, and he'll push him back out. Ace of Skates backing way up to try and get him back into the pack. One thing he cannot do, what you just saw Speed Dealer do. He got hit, thought it was a low block, got up, looked at the referee, got hit again. The referees will call it if they believe it's a penalty. They've been calling a very good very good tournament this whole time. Well, Rick Warren's still trying to make his way through. Especially with the uh, ref crew that we've had this weekend, it has been absolutely amazing what they have put together. Uh, I know at Spring Roll we've had a lot of conversations about how we had a lot of refs who were not used to men's derby, and uh, that is not the case this time. This time they have done a lot of their research, a lot of people who know what they're doing this time around, and so we're going to have a lot of great like refing. There's not going to be a lot of calls you're going to be able to uh, contend with. we got some late penalty calling. Uh, we got a blocker in the box. Marlon Brando still in for New York. Pivot in for Puget Sound and Speed Dealer, their jammers. So this will be the first power jam. This is uh, Jonathan R. Jamming unopposed and a power jam. 
Jonathan R., the person you want out there on a power jam, I'm afraid. Lead jammer for him without any trouble at all. He sees right the Right after gets the lead, 31 to 24. They are now having to defend that lead. New York, New York Stock Exchange on the outside, very slow, keeping the pack very slow, but they're actually getting their jammer kind of beat up right now because it's allowing Jonathan, it's allowing Fusion Sound to just line up that target and just hit Jonathan R as hard as they want. Definitely, and they were trying to slow the pack down and give him a chance to get through, but uh, they were just giving him such a rough time up front. Of course, Fry Corey Payne going back to the box. This is his third trip, and he's still got a lot of time left to play. Grand Slam awarded for Jonathan R. That's not going to be quite enough to take the lead, but it is going to be close. But there's a second, uh, excuse me, that looks like it was only four points. Nope, that is a grand slam. So that will bump them up to the lead, or they have the lead now, excuse me, 34-31. As he makes his way through again when the pack does not move at any distance, New York moves up a little bit and then backs back up into Quadzilla. Speed dealer rejoining the pack. Quadzilla trying to get him in ahead of him. Corporal Punishment rejoining the pack. There is a star pass. Star pass, Corporal Punishment, Seed Dealer passes it off. Corporal Punishment coming around the outside Corporal with the star. He becomes the jammer, and he is running into and New York's Corporal defense. Punishment is doing that new move everybody's doing now. I mean, it's been around for a couple years, but everybody's playing it now where you lower your shoulder in the back of that opponent's shoulder, and you just run. And you either knock them, they either, they, you either knock their feet off underneath them and they fall down, or you push them out of play, and, you get, and they move out of your way. Either way, it's not a penalty, and a lot of jammers and blockers are starting to use this maneuver a lot more with the way the game is evolving. Exactly. Corey Payne rejoining the pack now. Corporal Punishment, not the lead jammer, but he is zipping around the track, trying to accrue those points and close up that point differential. Jonathan R. getting around the backside of... New York is doing a good job about trapping one of the Puget Sound guys, but they're leaving three of them open to just kind of have a free party with their jammer. And I got to tell you, I don't think New York's going to be able to keep that up for the next 40 minutes. They, uh, Jonathan R. jammed really good there, but I don't know where he found the energy for that because he definitely got rocked a few times in that jam. Right, and I feel like uh, in a lot of ways that's a cool move, but in a lot of ways it is really tough on your jammer to continue to do that and let them fend for themselves. Hollywood ch 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 Chuck Berry, as I like to say it. In. Up against Ace of Skates from New York. Ace of Skates, of course, that big hockey background. He is going to come around. Scott Slamilton headed to the penalty box. Ace of Skates, no pass, no penalty, no points for that one. He is not the lead jammer, but he Doug is going Bay to try. going to be lead. He'll call it up before Ace of Skates can make it through. It's going to be three on three as Stand the Side is coming in again to jam. I think this is only a second jam showing. And so far, 11, I feel like we are halfway through this York. half, and the score is not very big. 49 to 33 in favor of New you York. Know what? I'll say it because I was there. There's only been one big blowout in a high scoring game, and that was Dallas this morning against the Misfits. It was seed number three playing seed six, and it was a very lopsided game. Every it, game after that has been very, very close, and that's what you want to see in these tournaments. You want to see these teams, you know, you want to see the best team win, and you want to see real close games. Nobody wants to watch blowouts. Scott Slamilton taking the uh, star instead of, oh, I'm sorry, they did stand aside, excuse me, and he will be lead jammer, ringworm not far behind as they come around turn number four, and they will meet the packs in turn number one. Shelly Hollywood, Chuck Berry taking out Filthy McNasty on the corner there. Filthy McNasty bouncing right back up. Rattlelack taking on ringworm, and he is looking for that penalty. But and he's going to get it. Ringworm is going to the box. Rattlelack will get that call. This is going to be a power jam. I love it when you say that. Taking the jammer line now, we have Quadzilla. Hello, everybody. I'm Dump Truck. <laughs> you do sound a lot like Dump Truck, actually. I do a pretty, I do a pretty mean impersonation of Dump Truck. You do indeed. we got to get Dump Truck out here one night. I can also do Beetlejuice and Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> Derby announcing play-by-play play and impressions by Rhino uh, here on DerbyNewsNetwork.com. I am available for bachelor parties. Anything else you do for bachelorette parties? We've seen your underpants already today, I think. I am sexy and I know it. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle is wiggle, what I hear wiggle, comes wiggle, next. <laughs> Quadzilla now jamming unopposed. My huge joy to announce for you and to announce with you, sir. 49 to 35 is the score in favor of New York Stock Exchange. Just under 10 minutes remaining. Puget Sound will start from a knee. It is three on three in the blocking staff.
Looks like everybody's taking a minute. No and they will call the no pack. Quadzilla struggling his way around the outside. He will be chased down by Vader. Vader not quite able to get him because he takes on Speed Dealer. Quadzilla coming around the inside, jumping over, and he will get the penalty for that major back block on Quadzilla, and he heads to the penalty box. This is going to take Ringworm out, and now he is on a pose as he's going to be coming into jam, uh, turn number one. Trying to fight his way through. No pack. Corey Payne and using his get a, stops to straddle that line and not go out of bounds. He will get a cut call, so Ringworm is coming out of the box and will not be lead. This is going to be a minute by himself before. Speed dealer goes into the box. Not Scott even Simleton a minute. And Quadzilla come out of the box. Quadzilla's out. We're going to have a two-minute free-for-all. We got uh, a whole minute remaining in this jam. And Ladies' Night out of the box as well. So we are slowly reforming our packs for these teams. Quadzilla able to make that pass. So in his acrobatic movements as he leans on one skate, turned in the opposite direction, leans outside, and is able to wiggle himself back. There's only about three people in the world that can do those moves as, as cleanly as you see Quad do them. And he actually teaches a class every roller con on how to do moves like that yeah and it, it, he's absolutely an amazing skater he put he was actually the founder of the outcast and uh and his whole team reflects that but the cool thing about it is that he's so famous and so big but his team reflects a team spirit which is great as well right around gonna chase down rinkworm because he comes out of turn number one and send him to the ground and quadzilla's gonna take a spin move off of ladies night not gonna quite get away at first but finally gets through Grand Slam, and just Quadzilla like that, LK. The jam. LK standing for luscious kicks. You got to see his uh, collection of shoes. Quadzilla, that is. He is he is a big shoe nut, is what I've heard. Yes. Scott Samuelson now going to the box. The biggest thing now is both teams. You can see both teams are getting physical. Both teams keeping their penalty boxes full. Wow. This is. Really good for jammers when there's less people out there to stop you, but it's very hard defensively to slow the opposing team down. Well, and of course, uh, as you well know, uh, seven penalties and you uh, foul out you of foul the game. Out. And so if they lose any of these players, they're in big trouble. And it looks I don't like think Corey Payne is, is about to be released from his fourth trip to the box, so he does not have a lot left, and he has a I whole I really don't half think remaining. that either of these teams can afford to lose any of these players that they're sending to the box I right now. believe both teams will lose at least two players. I'm just going to put that out there right now. Okay. Corey Payne and Jeffrey will be gone from both for either team. Jonathan R. trying to roll back around, running into the back of Radilac, of course. Radilac, a very solid wall all on his own. It's very, very big one-person wall as well. There's Thunderstruck making his way out. Jonathan R. has made his way out. 17 points. Wayne Jammer trying to catch up with the pack and Seven. accrue some points before Jonathan R. makes it to the back. 17 points is the difference. Doesn't look like he has any trouble coming through. He's going to come off, and I think it looks like Jonathan R is going to get three points to four. Or is that two? I can't turn your hand. Uh, I believe it was two. <laughs> Only two points. He got Hollywood Chuck Berry and the ghost points. So we have about six minutes left in this half. Looks like we're doing a little shuffling of the uh, helmets here, trying to figure out who the pivot is for New York. Two blockers in the box for New York, one in for Puget Sound, three on two. The advantage goes to Puget Sound. Speed Ladies Night and Speed Dealer are going to be taking the stars. Ladies Night, of course, showing us some amazing action today. Earlier in this bout, looks like we have a very slow-moving pack, and uh, Filthy McNasty will stand on the line. Jeffrey's and wait out for of the somebody box. to be released from the box. This is three on three. Ladies, Ladies Night met by Radolak and uh, Stand Aside. And Speed Dealer on the outside. He's going to make his way through. Ladies Night still trying to fight to get by Stand Aside and Radolak. Building McNasty trying to get Hollywood Chuck Berry out of the way. No easy task. There's a penalty assessed. Hollywood Chuck Berry taking some time off of jamming for a few jams here to be in the pack. And show us his blocking skills. Scott Slamilton headed back to the box. One one, uh, one person. Oh, excuse me. There goes Billy McNasty. Three on two in favor of Fugit Sound. Ladies Knights on a scoring drive. Speed Dealer making his way through. Speed Dealer is going to call it off, and it looks like Ladies Knight picked up two points. Speed Dealer looking very upset by that jam. Well, right now, Fugit Sound is making just some really simple um, mental mistakes as far as their jamming goes. They're not calling it off as soon as they need to, and they're giving... New, they're basically giving New York points that they shouldn't be getting. 
61-48 is still a very close just game. Very slowly chip away at that deficit and gain points. And, you know, there doesn't need to be a big, huge jam. You can just chip away at it a little point by a little point at a time, and that's basically how you're going to win this bout. Whistles blown. Bugin Sound needs to get across the line to start. And you'll see Quadzilla is going to... Ryra trying to get Quadzilla back on the line. Ladies' night. Stand aside, both jamming. Oh, excuse me, that's Starsky. Starsky jamming for New York. This is his Starsky first. Starsky getting cut out by Ryra there, having to come back in behind Corey Payne. No bag. They're going to have to let uh, stand aside go. Marlon Brando is going to get the 20-foot out of play call. And lead jammer belongs to Puget Sound. This is where they want to be. Starsky coming in, and he's getting. Stand aside, not your lead jammer, it's looking like. Stand, stand aside, oh, not. there it is. There we go. Grand slam, stand aside. Starsky chill trying to make his way through. Uh, looks like this is a uh, strategy that New York put in Starsky to give the, the other jammers a break and try to let them block a little bit. And it, this is not turning out the way that they they wanted it to. Quadzilla. Hamilton back out of the box, rejoining the pack. Stand aside, picking up five more points on his way around. Corey Payne's got slam it in. And here comes Quadzilla knocking Starsky out of bounds. Staying in for Quadzilla. And he knocked Starsky all the way around the turn. And he's going to have to go all the way back to the beginning to turn number two. Excuse me, turn two to get through. Stand aside, major cut. He's going to the box now. Power jam, Starsky. Let's see if New York can make any good out of this. Major cut, Starsky, as he was trying to pass the start to Jonathan R., which was would have been a good move. Didn't get the start on all the way, and it's going to fall off his head on his way through. So Starsky, Starsky should really be box. skating very slowly here, actually, because as soon as he sits down, we're going to have a power jam again for Outcast. And here we go. Stand aside. Four on two. Here comes Phil DeVignassi, but he's not going to make it to the pack in time, I don't think, before he can do any good. But there goes the penalty t or the clock course, anyways. Star Pass, such a great play, but we see how it can back up on you in a very bad way. Puget Sound gaining some momentum. New York is going to call a timeout, which is going to kill that momentum. Two minutes, 32 seconds remaining. 61-62, Puget Sound has taken the lead once again in this game. And we do have uh, just over two minutes left to go in this half. We have a nearly an identical score right at the moment. Uh, this bout, I said at the beginning, one of two things is going to happen. Either Puget Sound has um, sort of spent all their energy to beat St. Louis, the top seed in this tournament, or uh, you know, it's going to be a blowout, or it's going to be a very, very close bout. And I think that's turning out to be the second one so far. There's, it, it, there's been so many factors in this. This has been an incredible weekend. Every team, like I said earlier, every team has the potential to move up or down in rankings. We saw Magic, uh, the Gatekeepers move from one to four. Uh, Magic City stayed the same. They came in three. They're going to go home three. We, uh, Dallas Deception came in six, going home five. PBRD coming in five, going home six. And uh, Gatekeepers have dropped to four. I said that. So this is between one and two. Puget Sound could come in at four and go home one, or New York could go home one, or New York, New York could stay two. It's been incredible what we've seen out of these teams, especially the teams that have had to play all day. Uh, New York on their second game, Puget Sound on their third. Hollywood jamming unopposed and a power game. Here comes Starsky now. We're going to look for the pa uh, star pass to Jonathan R. Very nice move there by Hollywood. Chuck Berry taking the initiative, knowing he has a little bit of time. And there was a star jam. pass to Jonathan Nard. Jonathan Nard gets it on quickly as he's hit by Rattlewack. Sasquatch, Rattlewack in the back. Hollywood Chuck Berry comes through. Grand slam, Hollywood Chuck Berry. They are trying very hard to get Jonathan Nard through that pass. Big hit. Excuse time. me, I hate to cut you off. Accurate. Big hit, though. Right in the, to, I guess he got a call for a low block or out of play, but it took... Jonathan Nard's legs right now, out from underneath now him. Now he's, of course, sandwiched in between Rattlehack and Sasquatch trying to get his way through. He just keeps getting bounced back and forth by the two of them. He still has yet to break his first time. You're looking at the referees to try to figure out what, if there's anything he can do to try to force a foul here or get these guys out of the way. There goes Chuck Berry with a nice little leap. No oh, grand Chuck slam. Berry. Hollywood Chuck Berry. Beautiful, beautiful move there on the inside. Nearly jumping the apex, just sliding right through. Absolutely amazing. Low amazing. block, Marlon Brando, and not like that call. You can hear just a little, little frustration Hollywood out of, out of uh, Marlon Brando and Dave Drinking 
Oh, they were going to, yes, like you said, call it off. Looks like the whistle was a little late, and some points might have been awarded to him. We have updated the score now, 72-61, New York, uh, Puget Sound, uh, putting some points onto that differential, giving themselves a little bit of cushion. De definitely have a, a little bit of room for something not to go their way, but this is the type of game where you're going to see any any small mistake, like I said earlier, it could cost you Looks like a we have lot time of points. for one more jam before we go to the half. Ladies' night for New York, Thunderstruck is in for Puget Sound. Right, right. gets the uh, clock going or the jam going. And what it looks like to me is it looks like the, the physicalness from Puget Sound is finally playing a big factor in, and it is just wearing New York out. Ladies Knight struggling at the front of the pack with Podzilla and Ryrod finally managing to get around. Ryrod has to let him go. Corporal Punishment released from the penalty box. Ladies Knight's going to have a chance to score here. Ladies Knight taking that Not gonna be a, And Thunderstruck goes to the box. Now Ladies Knight will have enough time to try to put them in the lead before the end of the half. Ladies Knight running right into Corey Payne. Corey Payne pushing him out, having to come in behind that. Corey Payne shoelace coming on again. We see that movie as a fake all the time, but his, his shoelace really did come on. Uh, Ryder has to let him go, and he will pick up five points. Grand slam for Ladies Knight, and so we are closing that gap once again. Mullen Brando rejoining the pack from the penalty box. And he's met by a whole lot of gold jerseys as they push him back out of bounds. Big hit, Ryrod sends him all the way to the ground. Ryrod is going to try to make his way as far back to the back as he can. He's met by Adrian, and he's not going to allow him to get as far back as he wants. Knocks Ryrod out of bounds. Quadzilla goes out of bounds. Ladies he's got Knight, some words to Ladies say to somebody. Knight working his way back up to the front of the pack. Everybody showing their hands, letting him go. That was a very, that was a good pass by Ladies Knight. Took him a very long time. That's going to put him within one point, I believe. One point within Fugit Sound. He's still got a pass to go. Thunderstruck's going to be making his way through. The problem you're seeing right here, you're seeing the blocks by Corporal Punishment and Ryrod, but they're leaning into the jammer the same way. Corporal Punishment or whoever's on the inside should move out of the way and allow Ryrod or whoever the blocker's on the outside to get Ladies Night out of bounds. All they're doing is holding them up and moving them along the track, and that's a, that's a mistake that they're not clutching on it. They've done two passes now. All right, we are at the half. Your updated score for this bout, New York Shock Exchange 76, Puget Sound Outcast 72. Very, very close bout so far. This is not going to be a second half you are going to want to miss. Uh, 15 minutes for the half. We are going to take a little bit of a break, rest our voices, uh, go get something to drink, and we will see you back here in 15 minutes. This is Julia Childless alongside Rhino from the Dallas Deception, and we will see you in a few minutes. <laughs>
Julia Childless uh, from Derby News Network back here on the microphone with Rhino from the Dallas Deception. Uh, it sounded like we were yelling at each other yes, during we, the last Yes, we do half. apologize. We are strategically placed right ass next to a speaker, and every time any of the uh, arena announcers say anything, it just drowns us out. So we'll do our best to not scream at one another to hear each other. We're not yelling at you. We're not yelling at each other. I promise. Nobody's angry. No, nobody we is are, angry. However, I do want to also, uh, I, as I am here with Dallas Session, I do also want to promote that I am here uh, representing um, Team USA, also with this Team USA, or uh, excuse me, not with this, but the Women's World Cup Team USA. Uh, I so have exciting! I am so excited to see that. I'm one of the team managers for them, and so I'm here. I got my Team USA shirt on, and I'm representing that. For several of the ladies from Minnesota Roller Girls from the uh, Minnesota area. Uh -huh. um, Doing that, uh, Tamble, yeah, Tamble, Derby for all who uh, Campbell's here as well. Uh, I thought I was gonna see some of the New Yorker girls here, but <laughs> I guess they didn't make it. Well, we are here for Derby, like I said. Uh, several of the women from the area that I am from uh, doing that. I know Derby for all will be there. Our sponsor, uh, Medusa, is gonna be skating, so that's really exciting for us. Um, the first half of this bout. Tell me what you think. You know, both, both teams came out doing what they do best, if, whether it's technical or physical. And right now, what looks like, it looks like Bugen Sound's starting to get into a groove. They just need to tweak it a little bit more, and they're going to be a little bit more successful with it. But you could definitely see that it was starting to hurt New York after a while. Uh, if if there had been five, ten more minutes on that first half, you would have seen a, a big jam come out of Puget Sound. So hopefully that momentum is going to go. They got a 15-minute rest. Let's, you know, let's hope well, it was New good York, enough for, for New York. New York, of course, taking on Magic City earlier. Magic City, a hugely physical team, bang them up really badly. And um, and just and just fast. The, the best, you know, the hardest thing about playing Magic City is, is their jammer, their blockers skate as good as your best jammer. Oh, exactly. And um, we've also said about Magic City several times that any of their blockers could be their jammers as well. They they cross-train that so well. And, and that's one of the best points for uh, Puget, Puget Sound as well. Any of their blockers and some of their best blockers are some of their best jammers, and they they got guys that are on that track for eight minutes straight before they get a break, and that's how they've always played. That's how that team's always played, and they're 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 quite okay with that factor. And, and Definitely. Uh, so we're looking for um for a lot tighter defense from Puget Sound for them to really pull that together as a well-oiled machine the way we're used to seeing them. Uh, New York, we're looking for them to get a little bit more aggressive maybe and start really pushing for that jammer to get through and really make those points. So couple of things that they could possibly change about that and uh, tighten up in order for this to go their way. Only four points differ these two teams between being the first men's national champion and the first men's first runner-up. And both teams are going to basically have to tighten it up. The one thing about playing back-to-back -back as much as Puget Sound does is it keeps you on the track a long time. And your miners are going to accumulate a lot quicker and you're going to be in the box a lot more and keep your team down blockers. And that's the one thing that New York has been in good control of is, is, is rotating their players and trying to keep the minors under control. But you saw the last eight minutes of that first half, New York started getting tired. They got a little more sloppy, and they, they started to hit more. And, and these referees out here have been calling a very tight game as far as the hitting goes. And you need to be absolutely perfect. If your elbow is in anywhere, anywhere off your body, Definitely. And that's why we've been seeing a lot of that where people are showing their hands and backing up from things and making sure that they're not making contact where they don't need to. And so we're going to see a lot more of that. But on the bright half. side, we have seen some fantastic hits this, this tournament, too. There has been some people light some people up. And so it's it looks always like fun a Ry Rod up to the line for his first time jamming in this bout alongside Jonathan Ry Rod and R. Jonathan are jamming against each other. Four blockers for Fugit, three. And oh, a fantastic pass. move. Love this move. You don't see it very often. Ride Ride lining up behind the jammer line. Chuck Berry, Hollywood Chuck Berry, right in front of him as the pivot. And as soon as the double whistle blows, you see Ride Ride passing the penny. And, and Hollywood just runs off. And until Hollywood breaks the pack, you never know that he ever had the star in his hand. That was amazing. Absolutely fantastic. And, of course, Hollywood Chuck Berry on his scoring pass right now, slowing way down. Stand aside. He's going to knock Jonathan R. out of play and run all the way to the back of the pack. And Jonathan R. is going to get that minor Chuck cut. Chuck Berry having a tough time getting past T-Stop and Ladies Night. Ronnie Mako trying to close up that block. Jonathan R. getting knocked out by Rattelak coming in behind him. Chuck Whether Berry doing his 
next pass around. You saw Radelak get that that big hit. He got that penalty, but it, it still hurt. You can't take that pain away, even with a penalty. That, that doesn't really make you feel that much better. Jonathan R. trying to get around Ryrod. Ryrod letting him go. Jonathan R., your lead jammer, and he will call off the jam before Hollywood Chuck Berry can do any more damage. And you can see New York trying to tighten it up, but they did get a, a multiplayer block call right there. Of course, Rinkworm. I just heard Ms. Spider Rinkworm from uh, the in-house call talking about the penalties. Uh, she's correct. They are going in penalty heavy into the second half, so they're going to have to be very I love careful. How both, both teams, the number 11s, jam against each other on that. Makes it easier to follow. Thunderstruck, Rinkworm, both taking the star again. 76-78, Puget Sound is taking the lead once again. As we're in very jam number nice. two of the second half. Thunderstruck is sneaking around the inside, making a little hop, skip, and a jump right around. Unfortunately, Rinkworm right on his tail, not letting him get away that easy. Huge Under Sound been doing a lot of off-training in the last couple of years, building up their team. They've, they've always played with a small number, and they've built up to a full roster. They, they have the opportunity to practice with only the rollers a lot, through too. There. And he will pick up the four points for getting around. Thunderstruck still stuck behind Ace of Skates and Ladies' Night. Thunderstruck is getting a, a very hard time getting through. Marlon Brando going to knock him out of bounds, and he is going to get a cut call. And we got one blocker on the track for Puget Sound as Rank, the penalty is reversed. getting that grand slam as he comes around. Radelak, as you said, standing up, getting ready to come back into the pack. Two blockers still on the bench for Puget Sound. There goes Jeffrey to the box as he got as Thunderstruck pulled him out of play. A little bit of damage done there by Rinkworm. 85-82. Puget Sound able to score a couple points in there. Only only going to be down by three now. And I have a feeling that we could possibly see a jam lead, a score a score lead change after every single jam in the second half. Well, it's looking like that. They're just passing the lead back and forth essentially at this point. So. Jonathan Art. Going to burn his third minor. This is going to leave two blockers in the on the track for New York. Three blockers for Puget Sound. Looks like Corey Payne, Rye Rod, and Corporal Punishment out to block for Puget Sound. New York starting off with Abe Drinken here. Moving forward, trying to get that pack going. Speed dealers on the line. A lot of shuffling going on inside the pack right now. Corporal Punishment trying to get in front of Atticus Flinch and Abe Drinken just standing on that pivot line waiting for That's things true. to move along. Ronnie Mako trying to get around Corey Payne. Corey Payne pushing him out of bounds and coming back. The dealer going to get called for a major in the back. And look at him fly to the penalty box trying not to waste much time. Uh, Renko still has not been able to break the pack and New York's going to try to just pull that 20 feet but they better do something quick before he gets hurt. And there you, you see again Puget Sound blockers are both Ronnie Mako, your lead Both jammer, Fusion and he will be calling it off as soon as he gets that. Yeah, Fusion Sound Blockers again leaning against each other instead of with each other, holding up the New York uh, jammer. And, yeah, Ronnie's going to call it off. They're going to put in their uh, one of their star jammers. You always want to be in that situation where you get to score a lot of points, but in this in this scenario, good call off by New York to, right. to get one of your star jammers in there. That somebody that you know is going to score some points. Corey Payne now going back to the box. This is... It's going to be Payne. his fifth or sixth trip yeah, to the Yeah, I was going to say that's very disappointing. It's, it's got to be getting up there. And like you said, we may be losing players. I certainly hope that doesn't happen. But Corey Payne getting desperately close to that seven penalties. Ladies Knight picking up that lead jammer status as he sneaks around Rye Rod. The pack moving very slowly. New York trying to slow that way, way down for him. Get out of the way and let him deal with the pack on his own. Rye Rod trying to block him. Hollywood Chuck Berry pushing him out of bounds. They're going to have to let him go. It is, looks like there was a cut call in there. And he's still going to get all five points. Jammer said he stayed in. Both outside refs said he did not. Five points it is. In and out. Two for one goes. Quadro is going to try to chase him down. He's going to have to let him go. Close with a uh, tripping call there for Quadro. Almost didn't get out of the way of that one. Ladies Knight picking up another five points on his pass around. Looks like New York is back to full strength at their pack. Everybody out of the box. Corey Payne standing up, ready to join Puget Sound. Speed dealer on the track. He's going to lean into the Ladies Knight, and he sprints away. Ladies Knight trying to make his final get out. Ryrod 
all the way over the back. Uh, Ladies Night goes over Rai Rai. Rai Rai's going to go to the box. And Ladies Night will call off that jam before Speed Dealer can get to the back of the pack and score any points. That took a lot out of Ladies Night. You can tell he cut not a low block by Rai Rai, but out of play. And uh, Ladies Night tried to jump around it. Instead, ended up just going uh, flipping straight over the back of Rai Rai. Three on three in the pack. Looks like uh, Jonathan R. and Scott Slamilton up to jam. Excuse me, three on four in favor of New York Chalk Exchange. And you do have Scott Samilton. Scott Samilton always skates back and forth behind the jammer line. Pardon me, I am wrong about that. That is not Jonathan R. that I'm seeing for New York. Scott Samilton stepping out of bounds as he passed that entire wall. That is going to be Rinkworm in for New York. Scott Samilton uh, getting that penalty right off the bat. So Rinkworm having a chance to close that gap a little bit. Corey Payne, Radilak, and Stand Aside are all still in there trying to block Rinkworm as New York still continues to slow the pack down. This is a situation that uh, Puget Sound doesn't want to be in, but there's still a lot of time left to play here. We do have uh, 23 minutes left in this half. It's almost like it's, it's almost like it's not even moving in a way. So we have Low a ton block, of Stand time Aside left. going to the box ton of time still left in this half. We are looking at some big penalties that have been racking up, and so we really need to pay attention to that. Uh, New York hitting the century mark at 100 points. Uh, Puget Very Sound at 82. Very hit, Corey Payne, but he is going to get called on a minor, on a, on a minor, uh, excuse me, counter block. <laughs> Looks like we have a lot of recycling going on in the pack, a lot of looping around. New York trying to back up, give Rinkworm a chance to come around. Rinkworm going to do. Rolling off the track, Rinkworm trying to get back up. Ringworm going to do right right. Here comes Scott Samuelson. Nobody sees him coming straight in. Goes Scott straight Samuelson through Ace of Skates. Almost tripping over to Ace of Skates. It went straight through him, and he is, mm, you know what? He's one of those guys that's going to skate a lot better pissed off, and that's exactly where he's at right now. And you can see it in his face. He's not happy. He made that mistake. It was his own fault, and he's going to try to want to make up for it now. Most definitely, and Scott Samuelson is so fast and low already, and he looks very upset by what's going on. Um, and and he's and my fear is that he'll get hurt again uh, by making the wrong move again that way. And I, I think he's get, I think he's gotten past the point to where he's worried about getting hurt. He 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 needs to be here for business. Definitely, definitely. Ladies' night and Quadzilla lined up on the penalty line there. Quadzilla's got a hole, and there he goes. He makes his way through. Ladies' night still stuck behind a lot of gold. Quadzilla now on the wheels, and he's flying too. And he's one of the clutch skaters for Puget Sound, and he. Is going to make up a lot of damage. Uh, a lot, he's going to make up a lot of points here. Not able to get past Ryrod. Ryrod just sits at the front of that pack and pecks away at people until he absolutely cannot do it anymore. It is such a skill that he has. Ryrod, you're losing his footing. No, having to let Ladies Night go. Quadzilla makes it out. Ladies Night makes it out. Quadzilla's going to call it off. Quadzilla's going to stay on the track. Is he going to jam again? Is he going to pass it off? Quadzilla picking up four points on that pass. Not quite as much as I think he would have hoped for that. But uh, they are chipping away at that point differential, and so nothing it looks like they will swap, and uh, Hollywood Chuck Berry taking that uh, helmet panty. Four points and out, nothing wrong with a good old-fashioned hit it and quit it, save your legs, and just chip away. As long as you can go 4-0, you will eventually catch that lead. Corey Payne taking the uh, pivot for Puget Sound. Uh, looks like, uh, if I'm guessing right, Ace of Skates for New York on the jam line there. And I, we're not near the jam line, so I'm guessing it looks like I am correct about that. Ace yeah, of Skates just skates pushing again, his yeah. way through Puget Sound. Hollywood having a tough time trying to make his way through. Pack's about to split. Ace of Skates spinning off of Gino Evil's hit. Last one to be, but there goes both jammers now as they break so free. So nicely done, just curling his way around everybody as he comes around. That is absolutely beautiful. Made it look like he's been doing it for years, and I'm sure he just decided he needed to just try to spin there. And he will call off the jam. Hollywood Chuck Berry taking a flying leap over Sasquatch on his way past. No points, though, for Hollywood Chuck Berry, although that was a very awesome jump. We are looking at a score of 107 to 86 in favor of New York Shock Exchange. About 20 minutes left in this bout. Stand aside has got the star for Puget Sound. And Jonathan John R. for the New York Shock Exchange. Puget Sound now lining up in the back as well as New York Shock Exchange. They'll take a knee. What you're seeing is Puget Sound is trying to either get on the inside or outside to give just, an, just enough room for their jammer to get through. Radlack with a big hit on Jonathan R. He's going to make his way through. Brian to pass Steve Dealer. And it looks like... Puget Sound, we're going to get lead, and 
Jonathan Noah will finally make his way through. Radelak not going to try to take a last minute hit on Stand Jonathan Noah. Really, really pushing hard to try and get to the pack and get a couple of points before he has to call it. Oh my goodness, right on the inside. Looked like he didn't even try. Picked up his five points and called off the jam before Jonathan Noah could get to the back Jonathan, of the pack. Jonathan Noah did manage to get one point. Uh, three in favor, though, uh, of, 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 excuse me, the Puget Sound got all four, so they're going to come out on top three. 108 to 90, 19 minutes left to go. Puget Sound's had a couple of very strong, the last three jams have been in their favor. Hollywood Chuckberry lining up on the jam line next to Rinkworm for New York. Rinkworm's going to make a run through. It goes right through. He knew that hole was there before they blew the whistle and went right underneath the arms of New York and Hollywood is going to get bumped by Abe Drinking not a lot not enough to get him out of bounds as he's going to hop skip and a jump and he's staying in bounds Rinkworm though is going to have the opportunity to score some points here Rinkworm running right into the back of Corey Payne Radelak and Ryrod not able to get through he's just bouncing around in the back there trying to get a little help from one of his teammates but not quite able to make it Hollywood Chuck Berry Ooh, coming around the inside doing a little four, hop four, picking up his four three. points Three points for Hollywood Chuck Berry at the whistle blow as he jumps the line. Very nice job. As the Rinkworm got hit down to the ground and called it off, and just the official was, wasn't able to see him as quickly as Rinkworm wanted to. I know that Rinkworm's mom is in the audience today. I talked to her at the halftime. I met her earlier today. She is just she's just so excited, and she's so nervous, and she just says she's it's so nerve-wracking for her to watch this, but she's so proud of him, and I think that's very cool. Well, there is a rumor that Rinkworm is skating in his final game. And uh, Little Birdie told me that. Ah, which Little Birdie? Uh, people talk. You know, people <laughs> tell me things. So you're very uh, important. You whistle know. is blown. We are seeing no movement. Jonathan Arthur, New York. Scott Slamilton in for Puget Sound. And Quadzilla will move out just a little bit to get that final one. Big blow by Quadzilla as he gets back in the position, too. It's stopping Jonathan Arthur. There goes Scott Slamilton. Scott Slamilton managing to hold it up on one foot on his right foot as he comes around, just barely Scott making Samuelson it. Scott is going to get a major cut the track, and he just now realizing that he that was a blatant cut the track. Big hits on Jonathan Norris. He finally makes his way through. And he will be your lead jammer as Scott Slamilton is headed to the box. Jonathan Norris stands up, makes sure he knows what's happening. Corey Payne headed to the box. I want to say this is Corey Payne's sixth trip to the box now, very dangerously close to that seventh penalty. Right, right now with a nice... Ryrod now getting assessed the penalty for, I don't know, blocking too perfectly, I guess. I'm not sure. I'm sure he did with something called there. I'm just just being mean. Ryrod headed to the penalty box. A little unusual for him. He usually plays a pretty clean game. and so um, Four on two in favor of the New York Stock Exchange. Jonathan Norris going to try to make his way through. Corporal Punishment trying to lean him out. Jonathan Norris, spin move. All the Corporal Punishment. This is putting another big dent in the lead. And we are looking at a minivan situation here where we have Puget Sound with a full penalty box. Jonathan R. able to do a little bit more maneuvering as he comes in behind Corporal Punishment and Quadzilla. But they are giving him a rough time. They do have to let him go. New York just refuses to speed up at all. And this is just allowing New York, uh, Jonathan R. to just skate around continuously. We have a very excited group here at the Skate Safe in Long Island, New York. Scott Slamilton released from the box, trying to get through that New York Shock Exchange. Just see the Catch speed up. that Scott Slamilton has when he wants to come out of that turn. Well, we are looking at 129 to 93 in favor of the New York Shock Exchange. Still a very small point differential in this, and we do have 15 minutes left to go, so a whole quarter of this game still left to go. Got three blockers in for Puget Sound. Three blockers are going to be for New York Shock Exchange as Ladies Knight is going to get his fourth intentional minor. Hollywood Chuck Berry is going to take the star. <laughs> Hollywood Chuck Berry is going to take the star for Puget Sound. Banana over here at uh, the Skate Safe getting very excited, riling up the crowd, wearing very colorful pants. <laughs> That Ronnie Mako is going to be jamming for the New York Stock Exchange. Looks like there's just some slight confusion, and looks like Ryrod is being assessed two minutes. Trying to read the hand signals here from the referee that are not directed in my direction. 
I think they're I, I think they're checking Corey Payne's majors. I think they're checking his trips to the box to see if they need to have somebody sit for him or not. It looks like he is having a conversation with Radelak about it right now, and they're looking at uh, they're looking at it. Looks like he's talking to his coach, and his coach is letting a letting him know and. So, so far, um, we're looking at a really exciting bout. This is as exciting, I think, as either of us thought it was going to be. Puget Sound usually comes clutch through towards the end, but they better start doing something quick. They're down by 40 points. Oh, excuse me, 30. It's 129-93. Just around 30 points different, d differential here. And we are waiting to get things back going. Yeah, this is getting to the unsafe point, I think, for Puget Sound uh, when you only have about 20, 30 points even. That's still a, a pretty good jam or two when you can get caught up with that. But once you start getting into this 40-point range, you start getting dangerously close to not being able to come back. From Corey that. Payne will stay in the box. Rye Rod's in the box. So it looks like they will not be uh, fouling out Corey Payne right at the moment. Um, three on two. Time. Three on two in favor of New York as far as blockers goes. Lady Knights burns his third penalty, excuse me, fourth minor. Looks like uh, maybe. Looks like Quadro is taking a start now instead of uh, instead of Chuck Berry. This is going to be Ronnie Ringworm. Mako. Or excuse me, Ronnie Mako is the jammer for New York. Quadzilla trying to get past Ace of Skates. Ace of Skates recycling to the back of the pack, making him back way up to come back in. Looks like we do have hey, a Dragon going player. to the box, and Ronnie Mako makes his way through. He's lead. Here comes Quadzilla. He's out as well. Both teams sitting with two blockers. Filthy McNasty, Ace of Spades, Ace of Skates, Ronnie sticking Mako together. getting a little help from Filthy McNasty and calling off the jam. Zero points for both jams, for both jammers, so made a pretty good situation out of what looked bad for Puget Sound. Rinkworm taking the line again. Quadzilla standing by the line again. Looks like he may want to go again. Looks like a revisit of our last jam, pretty much. Looks like Quadzilla's going to stay out there. There's only two blockers. Quadzilla definitely has the footwork to get by, but we've seen Ringworm get by all eight blockers. Most definitely. He's been doing a great job this entire uh, tournament, actually, in this game especially, just really pulling it out. Uh, he's very small. He's very crafty as far as the holes he wants to pick. He sees them before he ever gets there. Well, one of the things I've noticed is uh, for some of these jammers, if their head will fit through, the rest of their body will definitely fit through, and so it's yeah, almost they, they like doing the, a mess. They call that the bird factor. Yeah. Quadzilla trying to make his way through. Rinkworm up higher on the track. There goes Quadzilla. Only has one New York W to beat. There he goes. Find his way through. Nice. And they're trying to hold Rinkworm back just a little further. Cannot. Rinkworm going to break through. He'll be lead. Quadzilla gets out first. He will not be lead. And Rinkworm more than likely will call this. And he will. He'll call it off before Quadzilla is able to score any points. Very wise move on his part, I think. But... Uh very fast footwork earlier from Quadzilla. Amazing job there. Two jams in a row. We've seen zero scores. Ace of Skates jamming for New York Shock Exchange. Corporal Punishment jamming now for uh, Puget Sound Outcast. this is his first time jamming. Looks like it's his first. Bout, correct? Look, uh, different, different strategy with Puget going out. We'll see how it pays out for him. They're starting Jeffrey, on a knee. Jeffrey trying to get the, uh, trying to get the pack moving. And so... Uh, Corporal Punishment taking a big jump, trying to get through there. They Ace of Skates having a really hard time getting past Corporal Radelak. Punishment on the outside, and it looks like he's got plenty of energy left in him, not jamming this game, and he is going to be a lead jammer. Ace of Skates just now making his way out. He'll be waved off, not the lead jammer, as he was not the first jammer through. First, Mater going to the box now. Four, uh, three blockers on three. Corporal Punishment, Corporal Punishment struggling at the front against Abe Drinken and Jeff Reeve, but he will call off that jam and pick up his extra points. He will pick up three. He'll get the uh, ghost point for Vader in the box. Didn't get Abe Drinken, so didn't get all four, but definitely got his. Uh, definitely got three. Well, and as we've said before, uh, chipping away at that score is definitely acceptable, although we are getting down to the wire here as far as scores go. Uh, 12 minutes left in this bout, and we really do need to start worrying about uh, getting some big points here for Puget Sound if they want to get caught up. Thunderstruck in for Puget Sound. Up against Jonathan R. for New York Shock Exchange. Puget Sound burning a penalty on uh, stand aside. Hollywood Chuck Berry leaning in on, on uh, Jonathan R. Excuse Corey me. Payne coming out of the box to join Puget Sound's pack again. Puget Sound still with one person in the box. New York skating at full strength. 
Thunderstruck makes his way out. He's about a whole track behind. Have a drive behind. Corey Payne, nice, big, beautiful hit by Corey Payne. Nothing wrong with that hit at all. He finally got one in there legally. <laughs> He's going to stop Jonathan Nari. It looks like there were no points, I don't believe, assessed to either one of them. Maybe one for Jonathan Nari. I didn't see the... Ryrod into Jam again. This is his second time on the line tonight. Uh, he doesn't do that very often. He is up against Ringworm from New York. Look at, the, and Corey look at the position you're seeing out of Puget Sound. They're squeezing in. They're trying to surround New York as well as keep the inside and outside to themselves. And you're going to see Ringworm again just trying to jump through as quick as he can. Ryrod now with a little bit faster fever. Ringworm just squeezing by Ryrod. Big hit coming on big hit two. But he's going to lose his footing. Ringworm's going to be able to stay in. Now Ryrod's got some ground to catch as his jammer on jammer action didn't pay off as well as he wanted it to. And Ringworm loops around and calls the jam right as Ryrod is hitting the back of the pack. Zero, nice zero, try again. Nice Ryrod uh, trying to take on Ringworm and get a little hit on him. Rack up some extra points, but you're right, it did not pay off like he had hoped it would. 131 to 96, 10 minutes, 30 seconds as we are entering the 17th jam of this game. Quadzilla, Quadzilla taking now. the for Puget Sound and Jonathan R for New York. This is it just excites me. We're about to see some of the best skating in the world come out of Quadzilla right now. New York coming up off their knee. Get Quadzilla your popcorn ready because here it comes. Quadzilla, one left to beat. There's his hole, and there he goes. If they can hold back Jonathan R for a little while, you're going to see a lot of points. Quadzilla Quad will not stop this jam if he does not have to. Almost oh, definitely Quadzilla easily skating past uh, Abe Drink in there. Jonathan R sliding past, finally making it out of the pack. Quadzilla coming back around, taking on Vader, getting that big hole. Ba He's, he's going to sneak through, try to get some points, not going to call up. Chuck Bay with the big hit, knocking Jonathan R all the way to the inside. Big hit coming off a, tor a tornado to Chuck Berry. Not going to affect them. Vader back to the box. Four blockers on three. Hollywood Another Chuck big Berry. hit from Chuck Berry to Jonathan Nard. Jonathan Nard is getting tired now. You can see it going to the inside. Chuck Berry just keeps, uh, you know, popping Quadzilla him as soon as he comes back. Quadzilla just looks like he's looping the track. Four points. And another New York Chalk Exchange, A Drink is going to the box, four on two in favor of Puget Sound as far as the blocking goes. And they got Jonathan all right where they want him, and Quadzilla is where he wants to be as well. Puget Sound pass, just passing the century mark, and he will call off the jam. Jonathan I now slow to get up. Uh, not going to get up, actually. He's going to stay down and just kind of scooch his way back. Grand slam for Quadzilla on that last pass, 135. Looks like we 100. have a timeout being called by New York, so they will take some time and reassess the situation. Puget Sound what? creeping up very close to that score, 35-104, to 104, with eight minutes left to go in this bout. Puget Sound's best bet at this moment. They're going to need to get New York's jammer off the track completely. They need to get a big, big score, and they're not going to be able to do that with the jammer on the track. 135, 104, nine minutes remaining in the game. Lots of time. This can be done. Almost definitely this is not a big point spread at all, but as you've seen from the skill and the level of this skating today, um, you don't want to get too far out, and they are coming dangerously close to not having enough time to get caught up with this. So uh, New York taking a little bit of time to assess what Puget Sound might be planning for them. Uh, Ryrod yep. once again lining up on the line against Ringworm. Ringworm. Just doing phenomenal work as a jammer tonight. and so Great great maneuver right here by Puget Sound. They have the advantage as far as blocker goes. So they're going to go ahead and, and kill a penalty by Chuck Berry. But they have not found any answer for Rinkworm. They have not been able to stop him, but maybe once this whole game. Rinkworm giving a little wave to his coach, uh, getting caught up there by... And aside, who's not jammed nearly as many times as Rinkworm has, is going to be able to catch him, force Rinkworm to call it off. One of the things I've noticed in men's derby that doesn't happen quite as often in women's derby, and that's where you don't get the lead jammer, but you sit on the lead jammer and just let them skate it out, and they have to call it off. It's essentially you force yourself to become the lead jammer at that point and take control of the jam instead of letting the lead jammer have control of it, which is really interesting. Still four, uh, three blockers for Puget Sound. Two for New York Chalk Exchange with Vader almost going to make his way in. Ladies' night up for... Ladies' night and stand aside. 
Well, he's not jumping the gun. He'll be getting a minor penalty with. And the side doing back to back jams, of course, right here. And not be able to get lead. Bader makes his way to the track, so it's three to three. Rod Rod's going to come off, and that was going to get the jammers going. Ladies Knight trying to fight his way through. Stand Ladies aside trying to fight his way through. Rye Rod and Speed Dealer for this, and he is having a tough time getting past. Stand Woo, aside not getting any better luck with Bader or Atticus Flinch in the back, and he has to back way up to get in behind. Stand aside almost had a way out right there. Uh, pack, uh, Pelly box empty for New York. And Stand aside makes his way through. Easily Jammer. Ladies Knight getting caught up again in the back. And it looks like uh, Stand Aside made Lee Jammer and immediately called it off. Seven minutes remaining in the game, 135-104. Puget Sound's going to need to do something very quickly. It looks like they've been trying to kill some of their penalty time. Corey Payne, of course, still in the, uh, in the bout right at the moment. He's the one we were worried about penalty-wise. I think uh, the rest of Puget Sound is actually doing okay on penalties. Uh, Rinkworm trying to battle his way past Corey Payne. Uh, one thing I'm seeing right now, and I don't, I don't like to talk too too badly Corey about Payne, the... Corey too, Payne taking that penalty. I don't like to talk too badly about the referees, but what you see, what you saw there was a no-pack call. They called Puget Sound up front, but they did not call any of the New York Stock Exchange members who were still blocking Hollywood Chuck Berry in the back. Neither team should have been allowed to block there. And they're focusing on the front jammer and not the back jammer. And that's that's not called correctly. And you don't like to see that. Exactly. I, I totally agree with that. And I I feel like there was a lot going on in that jam that people didn't see. And it was easy to call Corey on that just because, you know, you expect him to kind of get that penalty the way he's been playing. So. And the ref squad, don't get me wrong, has done a fantastic job. But they do make mistakes sometimes. I make mistakes. I got several penalties today. And I, I actually did some of that stuff. <laughs> Maybe, right? Ladies Knight getting that lead them. jammer, no problem. Hollywood Chuck Berry coming out after him and making it out of the pack as well. Three on two as Vader goes to the box. Lady Knight's going to have a chance to score. Chuck Berry. Vader taking that Only track a turn call. behind. A little more than a turn behind. Puget Sound moving to the front. They're going to try to run this as fast as they can. Radelak letting him go. Thought he was out of play. Was not. And um, Ladies Knight awarded five points which is impossible since you can't uh, get five points <laughs> unless you pass the other jammer. So a uh, bonus point there for ladies' night. Two for one special, I guess, is that's how that happens. 140, 104, five minutes. Puget Sound is really going to have to dig deep and figure something out here. Yeah. They are only going to have, New York is only going to have two blockers, and so is Puget Sound, but Quadzo is about to make his way out. Jonathan R. taking on Stand Aside for this jam. Stand, stand Aside, aside going to so play defense until he can get a little bit more help and get a hole out there. And he has been doing a great job thus far, waiting for Quadzilla to come up. Jonathan R. going to roll off and roll straight into Quadzilla's elbow. Stand Aside picking up that lead jammer status. Very nice. Jonathan R. going to roll to the inside, and Puget Sound's going to let him go. Stand Aside now on the outside, untouched. Four easy points for Stand Aside. Corey Payne back out on the track for Puget Sound. Puget's now, they're not going to call it off. They're going to trust that their jammers can score the points and their defense will score it. And it's going to work. Grand slam of Puget Sound with Stand Aside. Jonathan R now getting annihilated in this pack. One by one, the Puget Sound guys are just teeing off. He is exhausted. He was tired the last time he went through. Stand aside, rolling along the outside. Stand aside with a nice whip around. Grand slam again. This, and he calls it off as all of the New York blockers are out of the penalty box. That is what Puget Sound needed to do. We're going to have a timeout, Puget Sound. 144, nice. 118, 3 minutes, 43 seconds remaining. Very nice offensive work by Puget Sound there. We are back to about 20 points in the spread. Uh, that is easily doable in this less than four minutes that we have, but they really have to, like you said, dig deep and work hard at that and make it count for these next few jams. Puget Sound's only hope at this point is to get the New York Jammer. They have to get the New York Jammer off the track. they got to slow down the movement of the pack and allow their Jammers to get a 15, 20-point run to get them within, within any sort of deficit to win this game. 
All New York has to do is make sure that they play offense right now, get their jammer out, and as long as both teams are scoring, New York uh, Pugin is not going to have any hope now. There's not enough time on the clock. That run that they just had, they needed to have that about five minutes ago Most to definitely. put them in good shape. Looks Corporal like Punishment is going to jam alongside Rinkworm, rink and this is exactly what I would do. Rinkworm, they, they have not been able to stop Rinkworm. New York Shock Exchange is going to start on a knee. Full packs. Nobody in the playing box. Both teams are going to start on a knee because, you know, you need to do that. And we are going to get started. Rinkworm! All of them are doing right for pain. With a nice hit, intercepting it. Corporal Punishment makes his way through. Corporal Punishment, your lead. Jammer Corey Payne again leading Rinkworm, Rinkworm out of bounds. up in the back with Corey Payne trying to get back through. Corporal Punishment taking a loop around. Rinkworm not able to get past. Trying to get some help from Ace of Skates. Getting the whip around, but getting tripped. Quadrilla, big hit. Through. Looks like a low block is going to happen to Corey Payne. That's got to be his seventh trip to the box. Major Corporal cut, Punishment. Corporal Punishment. That's going to be the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. There's Rinkworm is just just doesn't need to go to the box. All he's got to do is, is stay on the track. Corporal Punishment taking a big hit from Rattelak. Rattelak backing up into the pack again. Rinkworm trying to get to where he is. <laughs> Rinkworm's getting Rinkworm's so delusional. He's running into people on the sidelines. Rinkworm getting blocked by Ryron on his way past Rattelak. Taking the penalty for that block. Rinkworm needed to get in behind Rattelag. Rattelag got a penalty on his way to the back of the pack. Rinkworm running into Quadzilla, taking a big hit. Rinkworm just looks drained. He just looks like gonna he's ready to fall over. Quadzilla going to take a major forearm penalty. Quadzilla headed to the penalty box, but he can't. Yeah, he's going to move it. right there, and he's going to get away with it. You saw <laughs> Ladies' Night take the helmet cover off of Rinkworm, which is an illegal move. And they are going to catch it. They will catch it. Ladies they will Knight catch the illegal the procedure. Box. Ladies Knight's going to the box for taking the helmet. And he doesn't. He has no idea. He has not realized yet that he's going to the box because he took the helmet cover off. Corporal but, punishment coming back out. Quadzilla not taking his trip to the box because it is full. So they're recycling around. Rinkworm falling over. Corporal punishment. Corporal punishment taking a big hit from Ace of Skates. Ace of right Skates going to put them out of bounds. Ace of Skates again. And it looks like Puget Sound is going to have about 40 seconds of track by themselves with a minute and 40 remaining in the game. Now they could run that. Now they could run that 40 minute, that 40 seconds with Chuck Berry. They could grab a quick 15 points. Looks like they are helping Rinkworm off the track. He One, just looks like he's been brutally beat up. That was a vicious. 143, vicious 121. Jam. Puget Sound needs a really good jam right here, and they could get themselves back into it. This is exactly what they needed to happen. I told you so. And it looks like a lot of people don't know what's going on. You can come over here and tell, ask me. I told you. I can tell you what happened. <laughs> It is definitely a joy to see you this weekend. I love having you up here in the box with me. It is absolutely amazing. We need to do this again, I think. Definitely. It was awesome to see you guys skate and get a chance to announce for you once again, too. I absolutely love all the teams uh, that play today. I, I adore you guys. I think it's absolutely awesome what you do here and that I get a chance to be a part of it with you. Now, so far, New York has a jammer lined up, and Ladies Night is sitting in a box with just his pivot cover on. So maybe he got an illegal procedure before he took the jammer cover, and that's why it made it uh, invalid for him to take it. That would be a, uh, that would be a, an excellent observation. That would be a guess that I would definitely go with. I'm not down there, so I can't tell. That's one of the disadvantages of sitting 15 feet in the air while we do this, is we can't really ask anyone. But uh, that would be an excellent guess, actually. <laughs> Looks like uh, Puget Sound having a little conversation about what they're going to do next. Sounds Score points, I think, is pretty simple. <laughs> Thanks and for that enlightening uh, view of our uh, of our color commentary here. Yep. Chuck Berry, Puget Sound, Ronnie Mako, New York Shock Exchange. Shock Exchange will start on the knee. They got two blockers. Puget Sound has two blockers. A lot of space for these jammers. New York will stand up. Puget Sound will take a knee. Doesn't really change anything that's about to happen. 
Looks like we are going to have probably one more jam left. So this will be the last jam of the night is going to be my guess. I think they're going to squeeze three into this minute and 40 seconds. You think so? Okay. Unless New York gets out right now. Ronnie I Mako mean, really, trying to get past speed. Really oh, under- Chuck Berry sneaking around and drinking on the inside, getting that lead jammer. Absolutely beautiful. Speed dealer, deal, speed dealer doing the hits, and Ronnie Mako's going to make his way through. He is not going to be lead. Ronnie Mako taking on Abe Drinken in the corner, able to get around him, so he will pick up those points. That is four points for Hollywood Chuck Berry. Ronnie Mako making his way to the back of the pack, and Hollywood Chuck Berry calling it off. And he's going to have to, and they're going to have to burn a timeout as well. I can feel the excitement in this room. Everybody is on the edge of their seats. I see people... Uh, with their fists and clutching their knees, and so this is a very exciting day. 143, 122. I, I wouldn't call it New York's game right now, but it's a, it's a, it's a very nice lead to have going into what is going to be the final jam or two of the game. I think that no matter what happens at the end of this game, this place is going to blow up. You know, New, New York for a long time, the juggernaut, everybody wanted to take New York down. Spring roll. Ma- uh, that gate, did happen. St. Gate, Louis. Gatekeepers beat them. In a very dramatic game, it was it was an amazing game. Lots of lots of people fouling out in that game. Very physical, and and New York with the chance here to redeem themselves. Definitely, Jonathan and take Arnold. back take back the title that you know that they are the best men's team in the nation. Scott Slamilton lining up with Jonathan R on the jam line. We're looking at maybe your last bout of the night, maybe your second to last bout of the night. Radelak having something to say to Scott. Scott just sliding around. In the well, let's back see if there. Scott can stay in bounds. Now, there's a lot of moving around with the jammers, but they got to be careful they don't bounce into each other. That Scott would be pretty little contact, and that is Scott a no-no. Scott trying to take on Ace of Skates here. Abe Drinking getting ahead of him. Watch Scott this. Hamilton Jeffrey, trying to take the Jeffrey inside the box line, watch him immediately go and hit somebody, and he falls down. Scott Samilton now looks like he's going to make his way out first. Scott no Samilton, lead. Scott no lead jammer. I don't think he'd call it off even if he was lead. He is on his toes. Jonathan R, your lead jammer for this. Scott Slamilton coming up to the back of the pack following Quadzilla. Jonathan R will likely call this off eventually. Scott Slamilton trying to pick up some extra Jonathan points. Jonathan R is going to run this one down. He's out. He has a chance to score points. The pack's not going f- slow enough for Slamilton to score enough. I believe Puget Sound has a, a timeout remaining, so his only bet here is to stay on the track. Do not go to the box. And do not, uh, just don't call it Scott off. Scott Slamilton on the side there, push him out and make him come back in. Scott Slamilton going to fight it out till the very last minute on this. He will try and get past ladies. And there you go, that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. Woo, Rinkworm puts his hands in the air to call it off. Rod Rod's going to give him one more hit. And there you go. First ever men's roller derby association championship. New York Shock Exchange, ladies and gentlemen, final score 143 to 133, a 10-point spread for Puget Sound. Absolutely amazing play from both of these teams. How exciting is this? Hey, look at it. New York Jumper Alley Day ain't never won nothing before. <laughs> no, you got to give them credit. They came back and they played solid games all day today against very, very hard teams. They deserve it. They outplayed the teams that they played today. They didn't have any type of anything going in their favor, you know. 143, 133, only 10 points, very respectable loss, 10 points. After what you saw that whole second half when they were down by 30, a couple more minutes on the clock, Puget Sound might have been able to do something. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen, on Derby News Network. I believe Julius Childless is going to be doing some interviews with the winning team and some of the other people from the weekend, so do not go anywhere. This is Rhino and Dump Truck signing off. <laughs> Rhino, thank you so much for being here with me today. It was an absolute joy to have you on the microphone with me. I enjoyed this weekend so much. Thank you so much to all the teams and for the Men's Roller Derby Association and Derby News Network for having me here to broadcast this event for you. Please stick around. We're going to be talking to some of the members of the teams and letting you know how everything went. I am going to go shower and go drink. And I will see everybody at the Women's Championships and go Team USA.